Hello, welcome to the video on solving literal equations and formulas. This is our second example, set example set B. And I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've watched the lesson and tried the previous example sets. I think it's really important to kind of build yourself up to more challenging problems here. So um, hopefully at this point you understand the concepts and um, you know you've been pretty successful with the more with the more basic problems. So here, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. We're going to solve the following equation for the given variable. Our first problem, we're going to solve for h. Okay, so here we have v equals uh, pi r squared times h. Okay, so volume equals pi r squared times the height is the formula we're talking about. So that means we're going to treat everything else that we see as a number. We're going to think of it as a number. So volume, we're going to think of as a number. We have pi and r squared is we're going to think of this as a number. So this is like one big product. Okay, so for example, this could be like say 10 equals pi times three squared times h, or like 10 equals pi times nine times h, and then pi times nine is just a number. Okay, pi is 3.14, etc. So this is like 10 equals, uh, well, let's say, let's just round pi off to three, like 27 times h. So if I said solve for h, you would simply divide both sides of the equation by 27 and you would be done. Okay, so you have to recognize that all this right here, pi r squared or pi 3 squared is just one big product. Okay, it's, it's going to yield one number. So this is actually quite easy if you understand that. To solve for h, all I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by pi r squared. So volume divided by pi r squared is going to be equal to h. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit more challenging because we're going to have to take some additional steps here. So we're going to solve for n. So l equals a plus n minus 1 times d. So to solve for n, how do I do that? Well, we have to kind of think of this as a multi-step equation because we're going to have to take a few steps here to get to our n. So thinking of this as a multi-step equation, remember the first thing you do is you do the distributive property. So I'm going to distribute this d to both the n and minus 1. Okay. So if you're starting to get a little bit lost, once again, pause the video, put some numbers in here, and take a look at the steps, and, you, and hopefully this will start making sense. So L equals A plus, now I'm distributing the D because that's the first thing I do with multi-step multi equations. This is going to be D times N minus D. Okay, so let's keep our eye on the variable that, um, that we're solving for, and that's N. Okay, so we're treating everything else as a number. So L, A, this D, and this D right there, we're going to treat as a number. So the next thing I'm going to do because I have a plus d times n minus d, is I'm going to combine like terms. So I'm going to go l equals a minus d. I'm going to get my terms together, a and d, plus d times n. Okay. So once again, I'm keeping my eye on the n here. And now I'm going to move those terms, a and minus d, over to the other side. So I'm going to subtract a first. Okay, from both sides of the equation. So this would be L minus A equals minus D plus D times N. And now I'm going to go ahead and add D to both sides of the equation. All right, so remember, I'm just thinking uh, as the N as the only variable. Okay, I'm treating everything else as a number. So this is going to give me L minus A plus D equals D minus N. All right. So remember we talked about when you have sums and differences, you want to always group those in parentheses. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to solve for N, to get N by itself, all I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by this D. Okay. I want N by itself. I don't want DN. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation here by D and I will get N. Okay, so this is going to be L minus A plus D, all right, put parentheses around that, over D equals N. Okay, so there you go. All right, so that is your answer. But let's take a look at the steps we had to take. Okay, there's a lot of 
subtraction and moving around of variables. And this is what I was talking about in the beginning of the lesson, where some students, um, this is a little challenging in the beginning. It's challenging for anybody, okay, because it's a little, it's a little abstract because we have to look at variables and for the time being think of them as or treat them as numbers if you will and only treat one of the variables as a variable but that's the you know that's what we're talking about where we're solving um, little little equations and formulas okay, it's a really important skill all right so let's move on and take a look at our last problem so the couple different approaches here we could take okay um, depending on how um, you did this, uh, you might have got one answer or the other, but they're both equivalent. So I'm going to show you two approaches. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I suggest you do it also, so let's highlight the variable we're solving for, B1. The first thing I like to do is I always like to get rid of the fractions. If I see a fraction, like a one-half here, I like to just get rid of it uh, when I'm solving equations. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2, because 2 times this one-half will get rid of that fraction. So by doing that, because if I have to multiply the right-hand side of the equation by 2 to get rid of the fraction, then I have to multiply the left-hand side by 2. So this will be 2a equals h, okay, because the 1 half goes away, times b1 plus b2. Okay, so here's our b1. So from this point forward, a couple different approaches you can, you can take. Because you have h times b1 plus b2, and this right here is an entire quantity, some of you might have recognized that, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by h. Okay, you can do it this way. So if you, if, when you do this, you'll get 2a over h equals b1 plus b2. Okay, so you understand what I did there? I just got rid of the h in front of the that sum of b1 plus b2. Okay. Now, keeping my eye on the b1, because that's what I want to solve for, I can sim simply subtract b2 from both sides of the equation. And what I would get would be 2a over h minus b2 equals b1. All right, so this is one approach you could take. Okay, this is a correct answer. Now, some of you might have taken this approach. Okay, so let's pick it up from where we originally, when I got rid of the fraction, the one half. Okay, so remember that left us with 2a equals h times b1 plus b2. Okay, this is where I just got rid of the fraction. Now, if you didn't do that and you just uh, decided to work with that one half, that's fine too. You'll you'll still should get an equivalent answer. Okay. Now another thing you could do here is distribute the h to both of these terms, okay? So that would give us 2a equals h times b1 plus h times b2. Okay, so I'm just keeping my eye on the b1 because that's what I'm solving for. So now I'm going to go ahead and treat this as a basic two-step equation. I'm going to subtract hb2 from both sides of the equation. And that gives me 2a minus h times b2 equals h times b1. All right, so now to solve for b1, I got to divide both sides of the equation by h. So h is going to be equal to 2a minus h b2 divided by h equals b1. Okay, so here are two answers, but they're both equivalent, okay? This and this are equivalent, okay? If you were to actually add these two fractions or subtract these two fractions, you would get this, all right? So some of you may not recognize that, but these are two different forms of the um, same answer, but two slightly different approaches. But let's just take a look at the work. You just kind of stand back and you look at it. I mean, there's a lot going on. That's why you really have to be disciplined uh, you know, be neat, show all your work, and take your time. It's so, so, so easy to make a mistake because you're thinking about, okay, which which one am I treating as a variable? Which, you know, what am I doing? You have to think about, you know, how to, uh, the steps when solving a multi-step equation, the distributor property, etc. But this is algebra, folks. I mean, this is what it's all about. But uh, the key is this. You, you go back and you work on your weak areas. If 
If you're struggling a little bit with solving multi-step equations, then go back and, and work on that. If you need to go back to more basic uh, problems, more basic formula problems, then go back until you feel more comfortable with it. So, you know, these are a little bit more challenging problems for sure. But if, you, um, but if you're getting them, then that's excellent, all right? So keep working hard. Definitely don't get discouraged, and we'll see you soon.